So you just, this is how easy it is, just pop that, step back, and you've got, hello, a gull wing door. <laughs> I'm seeing all of these similarities between cars, so let's open the, the other side. Look how pretty it is out today. LA, baby, that's where I am, on a helipad in LA. What's up, guys? It's Supercar Blondie. And I'm gonna show you something super, super cool. Okay, I'm not in LA. Well, I am in LA, but I'm actually in a studio. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> this is so cool. So this is where a massive event is about to happen. It's all about to go down for something super special right here. This is the future of transport. It's called The Maker by Archer. Check this out. Let's get into this. You might be thinking, what in the world is this? This is a fully electric plane that actually takes off vertically and lands vertically. So when I first saw this, I thought, okay, so some people are gonna buy this for themselves, pop it in their backyards, use it as like a helicopter. No, that is not the purpose of this. What they're doing is they're creating a whole new network for mass transportation. So people like you and me, we're gonna be riding around in this baby in the future instead of cars. So I think, is my channel dead? I'm switching to planes. <laughs> I follow my new channel, uh, Super Plane Blondie. <laughs> All right, now, let me just show you what is actually going on here. A lot of us are spending way too much time in traffic today, right? Especially in LA, especially in these really crowded suburban areas. So what they're gonna do is they're going to have helipads, just like this, it fits on a helipad, or on the top of car parks, lots of different areas around the city where you can actually get into this and instead of driving an hour to get to your destination it will only take about 10 minutes instead so 10 minutes is a massive difference now also you might be thinking well it's probably going to be really expensive no that's I was like how can you keep the cost so low so per mile it's going to be about three to four dollars so an hour long trip in a car is going to cost you about 30 to 40 dollars in this plane so it's actually going to cost you less than getting in an uber to your destination for an hour and that is kind of crazy we're actually going to be speaking to the founders in this video so i can ask them all of those questions so you've got six rotors here in the front you see this and you can see that they actually are designed to move so at the moment they're facing up and that is for takeoff so they'll face up to take off it'll take about 30 seconds and then once you're in the air these rotors will actually tip forward uh, so the plane is is being driven forward by these rotors so these things move which is super cool now on the back you've got another six rotors and these ones always stay upright here all along the wingspan now what is super cool about this is because I know a lot of you will be thinking well what's the difference between this and a helicopter because I had the same questions this has a lot of differences and I'm going to explain a few of them but one of the main ones is the sound reduction if you hear a helicopter you can literally hear a helicopter approaching from miles away they're really really noisy this right here is a hundred times quieter than a helicopter. Why? Because you've got one massive rotor on a helicopter right at the top and the edges of the rotor swing so fast that they're actually almost breaking the sound barrier. So that's when you get the whoop 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 whoop, whoop sound that you can hear from miles away. This right here. Sorry, how does it go? Whoop 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 whoop. Kind of sounds like a helicopter. <laughs> Okay, this right here, you've actually got much smaller blades and you've got 12 of them. So it actually makes the sound much, much less noisy than a helicopter. So that's one of the main things going for this as opposed to a helicopter. The other thing, of course, is you've got motors, electric motors, not engines. So that's gonna be intrinsically actually just quieter than an engine, right? This right here has zero points of failure. I was like, what? What does that actually mean? They said, okay, so in a helicopter, you have about 200 to 300 points of failure. If one of those things goes wrong, that's it, you're going down. With this, pretty much everything can fail and you're still gonna land safely. 
That is kind of crazy because these are all independent motors. So if you lose one, two, three, four, which you I mean, the chances of that happening would be so small, but if it did happen, because it has a wing, you can still glide down to safety. This is also built for like mini exploration trips. So you can go to places that, for example, never even had roads built to them. You can land literally anywhere. I mean, new desert locations, just remote areas basically that you never would have been able to get to by car, or it would take too long to get there. Now, should we have a look inside? This is quite cool. This one here is actually autonomous. So you just, this is how easy it is. Just pop that, step back and you've got, hello, a gull wing door. <laughs> I'm seeing all of these similarities between cars. So let's open the, the other side. Who doesn't love a gull wing? Look at that. How cool does that look? Come on. This just looks cool, doesn't it? This one is the first one they've built. It actually seats two passengers, but when it comes to market, what they're gonna do is they're gonna have a piloted version. So the pilot will sit up the front here, and then you'll have four passengers in the back. This right here can actually fly autonomously. It does not need a pilot, but because of regulations at this point, they're not allowed to launch this version. You've got this beautiful 180 view because you can see all the way through this window, all the way up here, all the way out here. So you've got this cool screen here and this will just show some basics because of course you don't really need to know that much. It's just, it's taking you on your journey from A to B. You just sit back and let the maker do its thing. You'll just have like the current trip, where you're going, how long it will take to get there, maybe the the altitude, the temperature, That that's it, the speed and, and boom. There's really not much else you need in here you've got some cup holders of course to take your coffee with you and back here I said oh what's gonna be in there he was like well not sure yet I said well it should be champagne <laughs> just like a Rolls Royce you know Rolls Royce compartment you lift this out you got champagne and some flutes and off you go the champagne would be more expensive than the trip if you bought a champagne bottle that'd be twice as much as you paying for a seat in this baby that is absolutely insane. All right, there are some things that I can't explain. So I'm gonna get the co-founders in right now. Brett and Adam, come on over guys. These are the co-founders of this beauty right here. This is insane. Thanks insane. for coming. I love how cool you guys made it as well because you could have just made like an aircraft that looks like meh. Do you know what I mean? But you guys are like, let's make it badass. And I love that, like with the gull wing doors and everything. Yeah. Was that just a design? But this is not for function, right? This is just, let's make it look really cool. Going doors are the coolest kind of doors Yeah, by yeah, far. I have to agree with you there, 100%. So, okay, what the one thing that I think a lot of you are asking right now, because I was asking the same thing is, how on earth can you make a trip so cheap in a plane that looks so badass? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a good question. So, uh, the first thing here, just we're building a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. So it'll, take off a lot like a helicopter vertically without the need for runway. And what's really important to us is to drive down the cost uh, for the masses. So yeah. every person can take this. Yeah, exactly. And this is very much different than a helicopter. So yeah. a lot of folks will say, you know, helicopters are really expensive. Will this be expensive too to offer? Exactly. So we have 70 to 80% less parts than a helicopter. We have no called critical components, components that could fail, have a catastrophic event on the aircraft. Those require a lot of maintenance. Yes. Maintenance is the biggest cost for a helicopter right. every single day. Right. We have no fuel costs because we're charging yep. like, very affordably. And then we're going to utilize these across the network so we can get a lot of trips in per day. Yep. It helps drive down the cost. Yep. And also we have like some great manufacturing work we're doing to help manufacture these at scale. Ultimately to have you know economies of scale that help drive down costs over time. So when you guys first launch, because if you just had the one of this, or one or two, maybe three, you can never offer a ticket for thirty to forty dollars for a trip. How many are you actually going to launch with for that to be even feasible to charge that much? Right. Well, we're thinking about the entire network, right? So we're yep. building our manufacturing capabilities to be able to support a large launch. You know, year one when we yep. launch in twenty twenty four, we'll be getting through the certification process. Yep. And as we start to expand into twenty twenty five, you know, our goal is to have two to three hundred planes launch that year. Two to three hundred planes launching in one year. That's incredible. And you guys are launching in LA where we are right now and in Miami. So are those 200 to 300 planes across those two locations? That's absolutely right. I mean, two great cities for us. We announced yeah. earlier this year, LA and Miami, fraught with traffic problems, yeah. a lot of existing real estate for us to land on. Yeah. Like, 
helipads and rooftops. Yeah, and so you guys can actually, because it looks quite wide, but you guys can actually just land on a on a helipad anywhere. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, we're basically designing to land on a, any conventional helipad. So yeah. which generally means we have to have a wingspan less than 50 foot yeah. in order to fit into a landing site like that. Yeah. The good news is that we can land on existing helipads at airports, but also retrofitting parking garage and yes. you know, land parcels and rooftops. Because there are a lot of rooftops that aren't being utilized at this point, right? They're just yeah. literally rooftops, that's it. And so you guys can actually retrofit it somehow with a charging station or like, you know, what else What else do you it's, need actually? It's, a, it's actually quite easy. So one is the top level of a parking garage yeah. is the most underutilized part of that parking garage, right? right? You don't park on the top no. where it gets hot, you park you know, down below. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of parking garages out there that are already centrally located yeah. that want to work with Right. And all we really need to do is lightly retrofit those with charging infrastructure. Okay. So think like a Tesla supercharger, yes. right? So the capability just to be able to plug in and then take off. And as Brett said, you know, these vehicles are actually not that big, right? Within a 50 foot diameter and they weigh less than 6,000 pounds. Yeah, this is quite interesting because you look at this and you go, well, this thing, uh, it, first of all, it's full of batteries. It's fully electric and we know batteries can weigh quite a lot. And that's, all, that's been the struggle up until now to create a fully electric plane is because the batteries are so heavy. But this is quite interesting that this only weighs about the same as a Tesla Model X. So it's like parking a car. That's it. I mean, listen, we've had to solve some really hard engineering problems to get here. One is weight. Like, how do we yeah. get as many batteries on board yeah. as possible? The good news is that we've had a couple decades of battery energy density improvements, yeah. which means we can fit more energy in a battery pack for less weight than we ever could have before, yeah. which also helps. Second is, the entire airframe you're seeing here was made out of carbon fiber composite. Okay. And so it's five times stronger than steel for the same amount of weight. So it basically means we can design an aircraft with a lot lower weight, maximize the amount of batteries, make sure there's enough area for luggage, people, pilot, yep. all the right things in here to make this work today. Yep. And so with this aircraft you're seeing now, we'll start test flights this year. I can do up to 60 miles yes. at 150 miles an hour. That's the worst case. It's end of life on the battery with emergency reserves. Yep. And so, and you know, as the battery gets better, we'll be able to go further and do uh, flights for cheaper. Yeah, so the batteries you guys are in here, you guys said they're, they're just sitting in this area behind the seats. Yeah. yeah, so they're right behind, there's a bulkhead here behind the passengers. Yeah. And there's basically a thousand pound battery pack here. It's about 75 kilowatt hours. That powers the aircraft for, for both takeoff and landing, which is basically a high power mission. Yeah. And then ultimately cruise flight, which ultimately takes a lot less power. Yes. So you have this really long, 40 foot high aspect ratio wing. Yeah. It helps reduce power. I, I, I came today just going, what is this thing going to be? And um, I, I'm surprised that it's going to be a mass movement. I thought, okay, it'll be for a few select individuals to get around the city. That is not what these guys are aiming for. They want to really reduce congestion, and that's good news for everyone. I know where I live in Dubai, there are certain times of the day where you just do not want to be driving to a specific location. You get into one of these, so what would happen is initially you would take your car to wherever the closest a car park is or helipad whatever it is get in one of these and then as you guys create more of a network there'll be way more of these landing pads and you could even have one like i don't know a few meters away from your house at some point you might think okay well this is a bit gimmicky will we ever see it yes we are going to see it i have a massive congratulations to give to you guys because united airlines have bought how many of these already two two hundred 200 of these United Airlines has already purchased. So we're gonna see at least 200 of these in the very near future. That's incredible. That's really incredible, guys. Well Thank done, you. that's amazing. So when do we see this? In 2024, we will bring these planes to market. 2024, get it in your diaries, purchase a diary three years in advance for 2024, write it in there. Can I get in one of the first? That would be oh, unbelievable. Absolutely. All right, subscribe to the channel so you can see one of the very first flights of The Maker by Archer. That was awesome. Guys, thank you thank so, you. so much. Yeah. It's fantastic. I can't wait to see this actually thank going. Thank All right, so there much. you go, guys. What do you reckon? Are you excited? I'm excited. I can't wait to get in one of these. They are getting all the approvals that they need to actually bring this to market in 2024, like in three years, which is crazy. All right, guys, make sure you like the vid, subscribe to the channel, and we're going to see you on the next vid somewhere else in the world. I love you guys. Bye. We're out.